Nowhere to Hide, Seamless Mounting on a Plexiglass Panel. Hello, I am Andy Estep. I am an Assistant Conservation Preparator at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'll be co-presenting today with Jody Hansen, an independent mount maker who was a contractor on the British Gallery Project. One of the many goals of mount making in a museum context is to prioritize the viewing of the art, our work must be as unobtrusive as possible. This presentation discusses the heightened challenges we faced when the exhibit curator and the designer wanted the artwork to appear to be suspended in midair. The proposal for this project was that many small objects would be arranged in groups and displayed on both sides of four eight foot high by two foot wide by inch and a quarter thick, clear, frameless plexiglass panels. In this massed out grouping, these small objects would gain a much larger presence. The retail case is a focal point in the center of one of the rooms in the renovated British gallery at the Met, and it is viewable from any angle. It contains approximately 130 small objects that are representative of the period of the rise of the middle class in Britain. These are displayed on individual brass mounts that are grouped by type. Consideration had to be paid to what is visible through the plexiglass, so both sides must be carefully planned. The effect of, of this display is that the artifacts appear to be floating like jewels in space. And yet, viewed from across the room, it creates an impressively large visual impact. The curatorial and design process started by reviewing the objects and then proceeded to scaled paper mock-ups. Mylar was used to visualize both sides of each panel. Paper mock-ups certainly are a commonplace to begin. When changes can quickly be made, objects removed and switched around, consideration of sight lines and object heights are easily reviewed. But flat paper cannot effectively replace the dimensional considerations of depth and post lengths, which is essential information to the mount maker. The importance of a full 3D mock-up cannot be dismissed. This part of the curatorial and design process allows for full review of the interplay of the panels and sides all together. If you have a project like this, many will ask why this is so vital to the success of the display. Cost of materials such as plexi and space are both arguments against this step. Some people will push for wood panels instead of plexi, again due to cost and availability. Fortunately, we'd had a recent project at the Met in our renovated musical instruments galleries. Having known the needs of that project, we clearly knew the best approach for this work and the institutional precedent for this course of action had been set. In the 3D mock-up, both sides can be considered in order to evaluate the relationship of the objects, the totality of the density and rhythmic impact, final determination of post length, object depth, and placement are refined in this phase of the project. With the initial planning finalized, we had a selection of objects that the curator and designer agreed were pieces we would use. Once we knew the angles to hold each object, we commenced making the actual mounts. We decided to limit the number of post diameters for the sake of uniformity. Too much variety among so many objects would look confusing. Because these objects would be fully seen in the round, the curators wanted the mounts to be carefully painted out for viewing as well. Here are a few examples. All object mounts were initially made with posts of generous length that we could later cut back to size. The cases for the British Gallery were fabricated in Italy, which meant that there was a long lead time between planning and final installation. Also, getting samples of the surfaces 
as well as the final use plexiglass took a long time so very thorough planning was necessary throughout the whole process knowing about these long lag times and that this is still a relatively new display technique for our team we decided to make a full-sized mock-up using the completed mounts and plexiglass panels of half thickness in this mock-up, the holes would go past the entire way through the plexiglass, so we could use those long post lengths to move the, the objects forward and backward to determine how, how they would fit in space. Using plexiglass in this mock-up was helpful to the exhibit designer and curator because they could solve some unanticipated issues earlier in the process and save time and cost in the final installation. Making these mock-ups brought up practical questions, such as, should the holes pass all the way through the plexiglass or not? If not, what about the ends of the drill bits themselves? The angle of plexiglass drill bit tips are very pointed versus regular bits, and they will show in the plexiglass. As you can see here, the drilled holes in the plexiglass have a gray color that has a strong visual presence to the viewer. Because it was unavoidable, we chose to embrace the gray drilled hole color and painted the post mounts that gray. The panel edges were another thing that we could work with through the mock-up. At first, we tried polished edges on the panels and the light refracted and reflected the hole drill holes to the point of distraction. Instead, we went with a frosted edge that does not reflect, but does add a glowing visual frame around each panel. To get the post color to match as close as possible to the whole color, we used the Object Conservation Department's adjustable portable light fixtures that can adjust color, temperature, and brightness along with the lighting department's gallery fixture lighting plan to match the stem color to the drill out color so it would be as close a match as possible in the final installation. The full size mock-up with half thickness plexi ended up being very useful for the design and curation team and for us as well. We were able to work out several anticipated and unanticipated issues before the final installation. Also at this point, all of the objects and mounts could be moved forward and backward from the panels using those long stems. So the curators could really see the groupings and make their final adjustments. Since in the end, all holes will be visible, we really needed to do as many adjustments as possible with this mock-up before working on the final display, where we will be very limited in our ability to make any changes. After all object positions were finalized, each mount post was marked for length and a session number. If an object was moved during the mock-up review, it was important to indicate clearly the new hole and X out the unused hole. After removing all the mounts from the panels, then a full sheet of mylar was layered onto the plexi. With a sharpie, the holes were carefully marked and important notations were made on the mylar templates, which now served as our drill pattern. There were eight drill templates, one for each side. Clinical condition, plexi anxiety. To me, plexi equals sleeplessness. Once or twice in the days leading up to the date. You might rationalize it, like you might say to yourself, this is just like fabric. No, it's really not like fabric, which has its own host of pitfalls. But the best course of action that we can share with you when we were successful is practice. Take your time, double check everything, template location, drill bit size, check it twice. Allow your bits to cool and do not stop drilling. Once you start drilling and you're in the plexi, do not stop until that bit is out of the plexi. Because 
Plexi exhibit design was mount posts emerging from the Plexi in a pressure fit format. The sizing of our holes was very important. As you may know, plexiglass has a tendency to melt slightly during drilling, and the holes can become oversized or a melted mess. I've used many different drill guides over the years, the kind that attached to the screw gun with a spring action, holes in a heavy metal plate. I never really trust them. They're okay. Levels mounted to screw guns, forget about it. I feel like my post drilling life changed forever after using these retrofitted tabletop drill presses. It's a simple pleasure. We could achieve very controlled straight holes. Using fresh drill bits and silicone lubricant was our best approach to clean holes without melting or bit chatter. In some cases, we also used metric sized bits. For example, a quarter inch rod in theory measures 0.25, right? But in reality, it might be slightly fatter or thinner in diameter. By using metric bits, you can slip between the wire size drill bit sizes of 15 64ths and 17 64ths. This allows for a very customized fit. At the Met, we have several mount makers sharing the studio at the same time. Often we bounce problem solving ideas off of each other. This is the modified tabletop drill press Jody just mentioned. This modification was a great brainstorm by another mount maker, conservation preparator Matthew Cumby. This modification entailed making a large hole in the aluminum base plate of the drill that could accommodate the drill chuck and moving the whole motor housing down the pedestal because now all of the hole drilling would happen below the original base plate. Then the base plate was carefully padded to avoid potentially scratching the plexiglass. In fact, as you see here, we made a second one with a wooden base that required much less permanent alteration. All drilling into the final plexiglass panels was done with the panel laid flat and fully supported underneath to avoid stress on the plexiglass. We laid out each sheet of mylar on the plexiglass, taking care to align it properly and make sure that when the time came to flip the panel, the one side corresponded to the other side of the same panel. When drilling, we left the protective plastic on the panel to avoid any possible scratching. With all this talk about the 3D mock-up, there's not all that much to say about the installation, rather formulaic and uneventful until the big reveal, which only underscores how fantastic it is to work in a mode of methodical pre-planning. Nothing was left to chance during the installation. It was merely a matter of inserting the mounts into the pre-drilled holes, using care to ensure that they were snug and did not get bent during installation. That part had all the creativity of a paint by number, which allowed us to focus solely on proper fit and safety of the objects. It was a great balance of priorities. In consultation with the Met's plexiglass fabrication department, it was decided that any cleaning would be kept to an absolute minimum. The cast panels have a softness and zeal in cleaning could lead to a noticeable scratch. I judiciously used a long-handled, very soft paintbrush to remove only the most noticeable dust particles. It was a beautiful design to have each side fully viewable with a seamless glass panel. That large glass door rested on a rail system with wheels and could be slid open to reveal 60% of the side for installation purposes. In order to maintain the integrity of the case, only one side was opened at a time. The door was supported by a suction cup prop that was supplied by the fabricator. This project involved extensive planning and we feel that the many steps we went through were necessary with constant review to achieve a result that was exactly what the curator envisioned. The British Gallery exhibit and the retail case opened only two weeks before both the museum and the city closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but we were able to see people enjoying the display 
during the gallery opening and in the short time it was on display to the public. We are happy to say that both the Met and the exhibit reopened August 29th so people can again see this display. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew and Jody. We now have time to answer any questions that our attendees may have for you. And actually, sorry, I have a question as well. <laughs> um, were the stems that you used, were they steel or brass? We just used brass. Brass, it's the best. <laughs> um, I also very much appreciated your plexi anxiety <laughs> slide. Um, anyone who's worked with plexi has had all of those sadnesses and anxieties. Right. Yep. <laughs> okay. I've got some questions for you as well. How did you work out possible shadows from gallery lighting to mock up the stage um, of, of, in your planning? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Sorry, it's just jumped out of my screen. Um, how did you work out possible shadows from gallery lighting during your mock-up? The, the, the shadows were kind of impossible to, uh, to plan for uh, with the, the way that we had made the, the full-size mock-up. We didn't have exact positioning of the lights so we didn't we couldn't mock up the positioning of the lights in the mock-up uh, we we used the plan but not not the uh like we couldn't mock up the lighting as well okay, right great. but it, it, i don't think it became an issue i mean with the the plane of the objects and how far they were off the the plexi i don't really feel that we had any really problematic shadows um in the final result Okay, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about those stems and how they attach to the objects and then also go back to how they were attached to the plexi as well? The, they're attached to the objects like a, like a regular spider mount would be on, a, on an object. They kind of wrap around and, and clasp the different objects in different ways according to the, the way that the object dictates. And then the, the actual going into the um, plexiglass is just a press fit. Great, thank you. There's a question about working with the curators and did you sort of have to um, draw a line as to when they could um, stop changing their mind? <laughs> you know, we had a great relationship with our curators. Um, during this process, there were some curators that came and went throughout this very long British galleries project that was many, many years. Um, but I think by the time we got to the, the point that we were drilling, um, you know, it had been it had been flushed out so many times that, um, you know, everybody seemed to understand what it was going to look like. And there were a few changes just in sort of how the, the clusters related to each other. But um, but it was it, it it went really smoothly. Fantastic. There's some questions here around the paints. Can you talk to us a little bit about what paints you used on the on the mounts? Um, and then did they scratch? You know, was there any problems with scratching as you were actually installing and working with them? We just um, we used latex paint on the stems and then acrylic paint on the on the objects. Um, any, any scratching uh, was minimal, uh, but we could also go back and, and touch them up. Um, the, the way that the plexiglass is distorted when you drill in, into the plexiglass, um, you can't really see um, any scratches inside the hole. Um, it's, it's invisible. Right, and also because we cut them, um, I had put all these posts in and then I looked from the other side and all I could see was this like shiny brass end. And so I, I sent a picture to the curator who was actually in London, I think then. And I said, I know it's a really small detail, but I think it 
probably matters. And let's, you know, so I had to take every single post back out, dab the little teeny end and, um, and then put them back in and, and it was well worth the effort. Excellent. Can you talk to us a little bit about the display case um, and, and how did you find working with it? The, the case was made by Gopian um, in Italy. Um, the, it's a very high tech thing. Um, a lot of our planning, most of the planning, most of the actual mount building was done before the case was finished. So um, we had to deal with it mostly in the abstract. <laughs> and then uh, in final installation, uh, it was kind of a surprise what, what it actually fit like. And I mean, we knew in theory what it would be like, but not, not the reality until it, until it showed up. Thank you. Um, there's a question here that says, um, given that you knew the hole placement in advance, did you consider using CNC machine to drill them? We don't have a CNC, so no. <laughs> okay. Um, and what about um, consideration of stainless steel rods? Was there a consideration of using different materials? None of the objects were were actually heavy enough to require a stainless steel rod. Um, they were all, they look large, but they're actually miniatures. Like uh, the largest piece was maybe a, a foot. Um, nothing, nothing very heavy. Okay, great. There's a question here about, did you try other lubricants for drilling? And if yes. so, yes. And, and so yeah. if you can talk to us a little bit about that in your choice in the end. Yeah, um, so I tried Brilliant Eyes as well. I tried just water. These are things that people had suggested to me. Um, and also just, you know, like an oil, right? So like you would typically drill with an oil. Um, but I was worried about um, the oil um, sort of changing color or um, the, the silicone is clear. And um, it just responded to the heat of the drill bit um, and was just, a, just provided a little bit of assistance. The Brilliant Eyes and the, the water, those weren't really all that helpful. Okay, thank you. But if people have uh, other suggestions, I'm, I'm, I'm all ears for what people might use for Plexi. There's um, some questions here around installation and people wanting to know, um, were you firstly installing the mounts um, and then after the plexi was installed vertically? Um, so if you can talk a little bit about the installation, that would be great. Well, the plexi was installed first and it was uh, spaced and secured and made plumb. And then all of the individual mount posts went in and then the objects went in after that. So does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And then um, were there any objects that weren't selected because of the display method? Well, there were a few I don't that know. were that changed. Uh, sorry, Andy. There were changes, yes. Yeah, sorry, there were ahead. changes. <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah, there were changes. There were some mounts we made that didn't get used, but you know, that happens. I mean, I, it wasn't a lot of pieces, fortunately. Thank you. Um, and people are asking, can you talk a little bit more about cleaning the acrylic after the drilling? Um, well, when we drilled in the shop, um, every post was, was checked to make sure that it fit. Um, because I did not want to be inside the display case having to drill again because I didn't want any of that dust in there. Um, so we, we checked everything in advance uh, before we went into the, the case. Um, the, the covering stayed on the plexi. Um, it wasn't paper. They tend to use plastic maybe wherever this came from, Italy. Um, and so that all stayed on the plexi to keep it as clean until the very, very last minute. And then um, as I started to uh, try to clean up a couple little spots that had a little fogging that was just part of the manufacturing, that's when I consulted with our Plexi shop and decided just to really not 
address those uh, unless they were seemed really significant um, and just keep a really minimal approach to um, any cleaning. Great, thank you. Um, and one final question, if we can answer this one quickly, can you describe your technique for pressure fitting mounts into the plexi? What tools did you use and how did you avoid distorting the mounts? Um, if we, again, we try to make them as close as possible in the drilling, but then I used monofilament um, when I needed it to be a little bit tighter uh, just to, to snug up those holes. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks guys. Thank you for answering all of those questions. And um, Jody, I did want to tell you that I've used Brilliant Eyes um, and Plex when I'm using a plastic stem. And I don't know, maybe it's just like because it's all plastic together that they get along really well. That's just my two cents. Thanks. 